इंद्रिया मनोबुद्धि अस्यामुच्यते so krishna in this section of the bhagavad gita is giving us a real you could say a real description of a real war there's a real war going on inside us and now you see how the sections go on the 36 is the 36th text is the is the what's the enemy what the thing that forces us to do wrong the uh, 37th text was the identity of the enemy hmm? 38th was the was the reach of the enemy the reach is the, the three layers of covering that everyone is covered by it Mm-hmm. and 39th was uh, in one sense the gravity of the enemy okay. gravity means it talks about how it's a eternal enemy it is like a fire it is insatiable so it is very sobering now mm mm-hmm. you could say this is the gravity or also it can call this as the strategy of the enemy how does the enemy act by covering our intelligence and the 40th verse is now the hideouts the location of the enemy from where does this attack us and then that and from 41 to 43 the last part will be the strategies for dealing with the enemy so how the enemy attacks us once we understand that then how do we count how do we defend ourselves how do we counter attack so he, krishna says it's located in three places the the hideouts of the self destructive enemy of kama they are three the senses the mind and the intelligence indriyani manobuddhi now if we consider the self hmm? now the self has this really doesn't look like a self but excuse me for my poor diagram this is the senses this is the body the body has senses now then we have the soul and the soul has these two tools with which it processes the world there is the mind which is the feeling faculty the intelligence is the reasoning faculty so the mind is associated with desiring and the intelligence is associated with the reasoning and then we have the outer world where there might be multiple tempting sense objects so if all these are the sense objects it's interesting and very revealing that krishna is not saying that the lust is situated here in the sense objects so lust where is it situated what krishna is saying is it's here not here normally the idea is So if, uh, generally if somebody wants to say in some countries they want to mm-hmm. have prohibition where alcohol is banned now the idea is that these alcohol bars are tens of in- iniquity you just shut them down the prohibition has not worked much all that happens is people drink liquor underground mm-hmm. So similarly with respect to if you consider specific sexuality sometimes the way people dress mm, the so so there is in the vedic traditions some people misrepresent the vedic tradition also and say that you know women are maya but krishna uh, krishna is saying clearly that lust is not situated in the sense objects it is lust is not situated in the object it is situated in subject subject means the person who is perceiving now of course these can be triggers 
but that it is that the trigger doesn't shoot the bullet it is somebody who presses the trigger and that's when the bullet gets shot so if you, the word trigger you know you trigger me if you say something like that you know, your words triggered me those actions triggered me and quite often the idea is that who were triggered is to be is considered responsible is blamed but krishna is saying no that it is inside us that lust is situated and therefore most of the solution that krishna will give will be on inner work and sometimes for example when there is any kind of uh, there is this horrible uh, tendency sometimes to blame the victim so if somebody is uh, say abused or violated by someone else and then often or at least sometimes uh, what happens is you must have done something to to send some signals to him you know you must have been cheap you must have been available uh, and that's why that person did that now of course with the me too movement things are changing and it's the because of the everything is on the other side where um i won't go into the me too movement right now but the point is that krishna is saying there no such thing as blaming the victim that the purse that when somebody gets triggered by lust and you cannot blame the other person for triggering you now of course that's not the whole story but the key point the next verse will give you some nuancing points over here but here categorically krishna is stating that it is it is within us that this desire is there so if somebody is an alcoholic or a drug addict they can't blame the drug cartel or the alcohol bars and once we start blaming where do we stop and there are people who are food holics now what do we do do we stop all food distribution you know, food serving units we might be able to stop bars and drug drugs but um, we can't stop food so ultimately we can't stop the food supply i mean we'll stop this this food supply will we'll decide who is going to decide which food supply is to be stopped so basically the onus the responsibility has to be on the individual that's one key point over here when he is stating that these are situated inside us not outside us i take responsibility how do i take responsibility that naturally is by setting boundaries i need to set my own boundaries and that's what krishna will tell in the next words uh, but here the point is that it is it is our problem and therefore it is we who have to take responsibility to solve the problem now does that mean that the world has nothing to do with it does the world not need to change that that will discuss in the next verse but the primary responsibility is ours mm-hmm. now having said this it's interesting what krishna says the locations of lust the hideouts now senses mind and intelligence this list there are many striking points about it first first of all is krishna is saying the soul is not affected by lust maybe i should not cross it out because that seems as if it's wrong soul is unaffected the soul is not contaminated sometimes we use the word fallen soul elevated soul well or impure soul great soul that's a somewhat non literal usage the soul is always pure even the soul of a person who is outright demoniac a person who is a sadist a person who is a mm, mm, sociopath their souls are also pure but around the soul the conditionings can be very very dark so now krishna is giving a list from we could say outside in he is saying the senses indriyani manobuddhi now what does it mean that the senses have lust within them that lust is located in the senses what it means is that say 
when the lust is there in for example the eyes the senses become restless the senses become like uh you know there are these heat seeking radars they become so these are seeking sensory heat that means what in common part of hot sense objects so the senses start searching for that so the eyes start feeling restless there's a craving if something attractive is not seen the tongue starts almost itching if we don't give some delicious food to it even so just at a basic level the tongue starts salivating whenever we are hungry or whenever we see something delicious but beyond that when there is craving the point is that the senses start becoming restless the sense the senses start becoming agitated so that indicates that lust is situated even the senses also so now if then after that the mind what does it mean it's situated in the mind that it's not only in the senses in the mind is wildly you could say restlessly let's put it a little more description over here the senses are restlessly roaming and looking okay where is something attractive where is something attractive where is something attractive hmm. now the mind is wildly imagining so now when we say the mind is wildly imagining what that means is that the my we may see a particular sense object right in front of us you know we may see some food item we may see some good looking person somebody might see a bottle of alcohol now that itself is it's it may be attractive but what makes it irresistible is the imagining of the mind hmm? oh you know if i eat this i'll enjoy and if i don't eat this i'll be missing so much Uh, how can I tolerate not having this? And that's how the mind is imagining makes it worse. Now, to some extent, the senses, you could say, they need external objects to be triggered. to be agitated or triggered you can say the mind can be triggered by sensory inputs the imagination can start by sensory inputs or it can also start by past memories so that's why sometimes there may be nothing in front of someone and still the no nothing tempting but still the mind is filled with temptations and the mind starts craving more and more and more and that way the person just becomes wild that their mind is so restless they just can't do anything at all because of the restlessness of the mind and then beyond that it's interesting the intelligence also included here among the hideouts of lust normally we would consider our intelligence to be the tool to overcome to fight to counter whenever the temptations come in no i'm not going to do this but um, so what does the how is the intelligence contaminated the intelligence gets contaminated by rationalizing mm. so here it, it is cunningly now when we rationalize basically what it means is we have discussed earlier when we rationalize basically we tell rational lies we we justify even if it seem even if it is not justifiable so first we convince ourselves and then we convince others for example an alcoholic is trying to recover from alcoholism 
and then they say that so we may rationalize to ourselves so they go to a party and everybody is drinking and they think one drink won't matter but the problem is one drink and just one drink doesn't stay one drink one drink only is two and to three and to four now does it always lead like that maybe it does not but for somebody who is trying to recover from alcoholism the danger is very much there so when the intelligence is contaminated instead of resisting the attacks that are coming from outside we start justifying the attacks so instead of defending instead of defending the soul we the intelligence starts defending the invaders who have come to drag the soul away if we consider say it like a if this is a fortress and there is a guard over here now some assailants some invaders are coming in the intelligence is like the guard the guard should be stopping the invaders from coming in but if the guards have somehow compromised the, sorry the invaders have corrupted the guard the invaders eh, invaders they have corrupted the guard then the guard lets the invaders in or at least when the invaders come in it's not a big problem they are not bad guys they don't have to do anything if they steal a little money we have so much money what's the big deal let them do it so in this way when the intelligence gets contaminated then it's almost the last stage at that stage not a person is sure to fall in the previous series in 2.62 to 63 krishna talked about the trajectory of fall down we discussed how somebody contemplates and from the contemplation that person goes down towards fall there he says the last thing is when intelligence falls the soul falls buddhi nashat pranashyati so get, the intelligence getting corrupted is an extremely dangerous thing now we may to others also we may justify that actually there's nothing wrong in this i'm just doing i'm not doing it for oh, i'm not doing anything wrong over here so say a husband promises a wife i will stop smoking and then one day the wife comes to the husband's room and she smokes she has feel smoke over there hey, you're smoking oh actually this room was very cold i was making it warm for you now is that i'm not smoking for that purpose but a person comes up with arguments like that so now if you consider these three uh, when lust occupies the senses they become restless and they start roaming seeking pleasure when lust occupies the mind it becomes it starts imagining more and more and when lust occupies the intelligence then it starts rationalizing and of its cunning but this cunningness it is not just to fool others we also fool ourselves and we hurt ourselves by it but these are the three places from which lust attacks us now one last point i'll make before we conclude this that the senses mind and intelligence is put another way okay So, so if I consider this way here, so the soul is here. The first door, mm, like this, these are the senses. Then is the mind, and then is the intelligence. So, if we consider our body. to be like a fort in a fortress then generally speaking these three the senses mind and intelligence are meant to be our defenders generally for example if some some terrible sound comes around us we just close our ears you know it gets the sound is too violent for us 
or if some terrible scene is happening, mothers may close the eyes of the children. Don't see, we don't want you to see something like that. So in one sense, something which is very bad, we close our sensory doorways. But the sensory doorways can be corrupted by lust. Similarly, the mind can be corrupted by lust. And the intelligence can be corrupted by lust. And these three are basically our knowledge acquiring faculties. And when they are corrupted, it is disastrous. It's like, um, recently when there was this terrible attack on Israel, so basically what had happened was, for some reason, their intelligence just became dysfunctional. There I'm using intelligence in more than this, military intelligence. The military intelligence was dysfunctional. And then the, the Hamas terrorists were coming in and breaking havoc. And Israel didn't even come to know about it for a long time. So similarly for us, when these defense, when these defenders, they, they are somehow compromised, then we end up doing terrible things, things that hurt us, as well as others, and we don't even realize this is happening. These knowledge difficulties, when they're corrupted, this is what Krishna was talking about, avrutam jnana metina, that day, our knowledge gets covered. That means we don't see things properly. We... When we see a bottle of alcohol, we think, oh, there's so much enjoyment, go high. After there's a hangover, there's so much trouble after that. We don't see that at all. So we need to recognize that these, it's like we already, if, if say a country knows that their intelligence is corrupted, the country knows its military intelligence is corrupted, then they will be on extra lookout because Okay, where is the leak? Where is the corruption? There will be extra vigilance will be required because it's not just the enemies from outside who are who we have to watch out for. It's that there are enemies inside. You know, there are, you could say, all these three are our domestic traitors. Hmm? Now, of course, there's no evidence in the case of Israel that any of the Israeli soldiers have corrupted and that's how Lamas came inside. But it happens sometimes that the opposing invading army has corrupted the defenders. So these are, we all have our domestic traitors. Our senses and mind and intelligence, they all can betray us. They can take us towards the things that are harmful for us. And that's why it's vital for us to always be careful. We eat some food, it's enjoyable initially. Afterwards, the, it's like all the sensual enjoyment always has. This law of diminishing returns. Mm -hmm. But it's not that simple. It's diminishing returns, but sometimes in between, there's a little spike somewhere. Mm -hmm. So it is this unpredictability. Like, say, if somebody is just surfing on social media. Now you're watching one Insta reel after another, after another, or one just mindlessly going through one photo, one photo, one video, another video. And then after some time, it just gets bored. But we want it. Yeah, maybe something interesting will be there. Now, if all of them were vapid, you'll get totally bored. But in between, if one thing that comes up good, maybe 50 were boring, but one came up good. We already spent 50 minutes, we got something, one minute good, but then we think, oh, maybe something more will come. Something more will come. So like that, the nature of lust is that it never makes us, it makes us frustrated, but never hopelessly frustrated. It frustrates us. It makes us frustrated. Oh, I didn't get anything. I didn't get anything. I didn't get anything. But next time I'll get. Next time I'll get. And that idea that next time I will get. When the senses see something new, the mind imagines something new, it is meant for the intelligence to stop. I know. There's nothing here. Just stop it. It's not worth it. But when the intelligence is corrupted, yeah, just one more. Things will be good now. 
and that's how we get trapped so this uh, whether we to if the intelligence is corrupted it's very difficult for a person to be saved so we focus on only one verse today 3.40 it's an important verse so first i did a summary of the section then we talked about the it's like inner war and it's a strategy for the inner war that is being described so inner war out you could say inner war contours who is fighting what is the strategy the strategy is that they covering our intelligence and then we focus on 37 the 40th words which was the hideouts the hideouts are three hideouts of the self destructive of karma and the senses the mind and the intelligence and the key point over here is they are all associated with the self hmm? not the object there is no blaming of the object to be entertained in the philosophy of the bhagavad gita then we discussed how these three they they corrupt our knowledge acquiring faculty corrupt our knowledge acquisition basically was these three are knowledge providers for us how we mm, can't see things properly senses they become wild they become restlessly roaming then the mind becomes wildly imagining even if there, there may be a trigger there may not be a trigger but the mind starts imagining and the in intelligence starts sin cunningly sinisterly rationalizing and in this way we tend to become trapped so these three are uh, knowledge acquiring faculties and when these three is it goes with this greater penetration greater infiltration you can say greater infiltration and greater danger for us so knowing that there is such a these are these three you could say knowing that these are like domestic domestic traitors within us they are traitors within us we need to be vigilant how to protect ourselves that will be discussed in the next session thank you hari krishna